Hello friends and we're back with another showdown special to finish up the week as we started off the week with this Rayquaza and Xerneas team. We're going to finish it up this week. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris and I haven't changed anything up in the team but as always the team is down in the description below. There is a roll paste of the team if you guys want to try it out. We've been tweaking around all week. We started off with the scissor in the Gastron slot and then changed over to this little slug and it seems to be doing alright. So hopefully um, we can get some nice results today and show the team doing some work and maybe if not have a look at where areas um, that we can improve the team going forward. Um, no, I did try and record this episode just before but uh, unfortunately there was a lot of drilling still going on so I had to scrap that one wait a little while and then come back to it now so hopefully it doesn't take too long to find a first opponent um, even if it does it gives me a chance to chat to you guys so I hope you're all doing well um, and as always if you do enjoy this sort of content please remember to drop a like on the video so we've got a first opponent of the episode we've got uh, a Kyogre and Eveltal call this is something that I do feel like that will pick up quite a bit of popularity um, early Ultra series with all of the um, Ultra Necrozma going around, the Kyogre, Groudon, and the lack of Xerneas. I feel like Eveltal kind of thrives in that sort of format. So, uh, this core that we're facing right now is something that I do feel like will potentially um, make a bit of a splash in the format going forward. Right, it's going to be a bit tricky for us, of course, because the Gengar, uh, Mega Gengar, the team puts on a lot of pressure, um, especially when it's paired alongside the, um, the Kyogre. I'm going to lead off with Incineroar, and I think <sighs> it's difficult leading with Tapu Koko in this situation. I do want to bring it. Now, the Togonomaru makes it difficult bringing it anywhere in the best of times, but uh, I think just for the Celesteela. We're probably going to see it. I'm going to bring Rayquaza. Uh, Gastrodon's going to be decent here. And then I think Tapu Koko. Xenia's not really doing too much in this match other than the Eveltal, which we can deal with with uh, Tapu Koko anyway once we get rid of potentially the Togunamaru. So we are going to see my opponent lead out with the uh, Togunamaru and Eveltal. Um, hmm. I think maybe you turn into Eveltal and then we'll go for a, a hard switch from Rayquaza into Gastrodon because I feel like if you're talking to Mario, you either fake out or you go for a nuzzle into Ray to really shut it down. Um, it's probably as well, I, I would say Assault Vest Eveltal would be my best guess, but you never know. It could be uh, Z move as well. You know, Z move is very effective in this sort of team. And then you look around the other members of the team and you think, well, where else would the Z move be? Could be on Togunamaru, but it's more likely to be on the Eveltal here. Uh, so we are just going to see uh, a fake out and a tailwind come out from the Eveltal. Uh, I'm going to go for that U turn again, and I think uh, because I expect the Z move here, it might be worth going into Tapu Koko here. It'll take it. We could protect with Gastrodon, but it's nice to have Gastrodon in the back as a switch in for when Kyogre does hit the field. Um, and Kyogre should be able to sap up the Z move uh, pretty well. I'm going to see Kyogre actually hit the field right now. Um, this isn't the worst. Uh, once we see the Togunamaru, it is going to go for a nuzzle into Incineroar. It doesn't look like we're going to have the um, inclusion of Mega Gengar in the, this team. So, where do we want to go? We want to maybe go into Rayquaza. Because once Mega Evolved, we can get rid of the rain. We can do some nice damage to the Kyogre as well. And I think, to be honest, we can probably pick up a knockout there and potentially get Gastrodon back in. It might be better to go for an Earthquake, in all honesty. But we'll see. There's a Super Fang and an Iron. Ooh, a Water Spout. Ah, well, Ray should take that. That's nice. But not really. I think you probably go for that to get rid of the Tapu Koko more than anything else. Um, Eveltal likely to come back in now, I would say. Uh, and we probably want to um, plus one special attack as well, so that's quite nice. I'll bring in Incineroar and just protect Gastrodon. I think one of the things that I'm still a bit wary of is this Eveltal pulling the trigger on a potential Z move here. We're going to see actually Celesteela hit the field um, as we do get our Incineroar. 
out and we'll see the token tomorrow we go for a U-turn. It is gonna pivot into the Uveltal, uh, but we do have the opportunity now to go for Fake Out into Uveltal and Ice Beam as well, just to uh, to get around that and indicating maybe that it is um, a Salt Vest, but potentially not as well. Um, I think now we'll go for a Flare Blitz into the Uveltal. Still wary about the potential Z move there. Just want to protect Gastrodon. I think Gastrodon's a little bit of a key for us in this match. Especially once the Uveltal goes down, it gives us a nice way to, to deal with the Togo tomorrow as we do see the Uveltal go for a uh, Oblivion Wing into the Protector and uh, the Leech Seed come up from the Celestia. Now we need to preserve Incineroar for sure. Here, yeah, I'm going to switch into Rayquaza. We'll probably see, uh, do I switch actually? We could get a free Flare Blitz. We could just, because the Token of Maru can only fake out one target here. Um, and as long as we take down the Token of Maru, Tapu Koko can deal with that Celesteela pretty handily. So I think that's one thing we have to watch out for here. We're going to see Super Fang, Leech Seed there. Earth Power going to be more than enough. And then the Flare Blitz into that Celesteela. <laughs> Nearly chunking it down. It is going to snap back with uh, the, the Leech Seed recover there. But um, one of the things we can do is just switch to Koko, go for an Ice Beam. I'd imagine the Celestial to protect to try and get a little bit of damage uh, recovered here this next turn from the double leech seed. That would be my best bet, I think. Um, we're not going to see that, just a heavy slam, just going for it. So we get the ice beam, um, and now it's 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 game over, isn't it? It's game over, I say. Celestial are going to take a nice chunky thunderbolt in the terrain, and that should be that should be GG premature GG. Oh, it's going to protect though a little bit more health back. It's not really going to help it though in this situation, unfortunately. The Gastrodon can go down. We've still got Ray in the back to come in, but uh, not getting that next. Protect off, so there we go, and we'll come back to the main menu, and we'll hop straight into our next game, and hopefully, like I say, every time, it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent, but um, I'm really excited for the Ultra Circuit to start up again. I was kind of hoping that we would get maybe a variation on the rule set going into the the, the first portion of this next season, but um, it looks as though it is going to be the Ultra Rules, which makes a lot of sense. It's less work for um, Pokemon Company International, and you know, they're going to have a lot on their hands preparing for Sword and Shield when that does get introduced uh, officially on the 4th of January next year. But we'll be doing some content around that just to make sure that everyone's aware of uh, the rules when they do come in. We've got an next opponent, it's going to be a Ray Ogre team, uh, dual mega with. Potentially Mega Gengar there alongside the, the Mega Rayquaza, Stack Attacker, Tapu Koko and Incineroar. So this Trick Room definitely on this team we need to be a bit careful of. Um, Gastrodon again is here for that Stack Attacker matchup. Does well against Koko, Mega Gengar as well as that Kyogre. So definitely want to bring it and the, uh, the Incineroar. So do want to bring that along to the party I think. Um, I'm going to bring Incineroar and the Rayquaza, Incineroar, Gastrodon, and I think, um, what do we want in our last slot? Maybe Tapu Koko? Yeah, we'll go with Koko. Koko Maloko. Um, okay, so I think we could probably. I don't really want to take a Dragon Ascent unnecessarily. The Koko will probably protect here, I would imagine. We could switch, hard switch into Koko and um, hard switch into Gastrodon here. It does give my, the problem is, gives my op opponent the opportunity to get some big damage off with, with, um, with Tempo Cuckoo, which I don't really want to do. I'm gonna just pull the hard switch on both ends. Um, it just means I've got the Intimidate in the back. Coco gonna protect, we're gonna see uh, protect from Rayquaza. So Rayquaza can protect this next turn. Other than Tapu Koko, uh, other than the Rayquaza, my opponent doesn't have anything that it really wants to be switching into in Earth Power, so I'm quite happy Earth Powering into that slot and going for Twinkle Tackle into this Ray here. We might see Ray switch out to stacks, but at the same time, um, I think the worst thing that we could see is maybe a Twinkle Tackle from the Tapu Koko into Gastrodon and a Dragon Ascent, like doubling up in that slot. Um, but if the Ray does attack and it's it's not a salt vest it will go down to this twinkle tackle here so we do get it off let's see what variant it is and it's just a regular old ray so we go sky drop Ooh, tasty 
Um, okay, Incineroar gonna hit the field now. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna just get faked out. But I'm gonna try for the, the Earth Power there, and I'll try for a Volt Switch as well. If the. Um, yeah, we're just gonna see it, so no attacks here. Oh, we do, we do get it off, so that's quite nice, and we'll get. Do we wanna get Incineroar in or Rayquaza? Um, might be good to get. Uh, Incineroar. I'm kind of wary about that Tapu Koko still with the Twinkle Tackle, even though it's revealed Sky Drop already and kind of maybe indicates that it's not that variant. Um, I'm going to go for a Earth Power into Koko and I'll go for a U turn into the Incineroar. It's undoubtedly going to be the Kyogre in the back, and I don't think my opponent really has a way to deal with Gastrodon. I think their best way to deal with it would have been a Twinkle Tackle. Um, We'll just bring in Coco once again. Coco Maluco. Uh, Coco's avoiding it. He's a stacks. So we'll just go for. I mean, the Coco probably switches out here. I just don't want my opponent getting a trick room up. So I'm going to go into the stack attacker. And I'm going to Volt Switch into the Coco. Um, might have been better doubling into the stack attacker, thinking that it might have the Sugar Berry. And this sort of build as well, that it makes sense to have the Sugar Berry. You don't need to really think about the safety goggles. These are all things that you want to be thinking about. You know, the safety goggles here, uh, you've got the electric terrain, so you don't need to worry about that too much. We'll go back into Incineroar here, just in case we do see the trick room come up and the sugar berry pop with the stacker. And there it is, yeah. So like I say, it does make sense in this sort of build. Um, it does get the trick room up, but I mean, it's not really helping it that much, is it? So we'll go for fake out and um, Earth Power into the stacks. Tapu Koko going to hit the field once again, so I mean, we're going to be able to get the stack attacker for free here. The Tapu Koko is in a terrible position here. This is why setting up your own trick room seems like a good idea at the time, and then it's, it backfires a little bit when you've got that one really offensive Pokemon that just doesn't perform well in the trick room environment. Uh, we'll protect Gastrodon and we'll go for Fleblets into Coco. I'd imagine we'll see. Ooh, we're going to see Z move from Incineroar. Uh, into Gastrodon, so good job we did protect there, that would have done big damage otherwise, <laughs> and a critical hit into, uh, we'll say good game, and uh, we'll move on swiftly to our next game, uh, the crit there big, but I don't think it really mattered in the end, my opponent could probably have uh, stalled out the trick room, but then Tapakoko is still in a, a really awkward position where it's probably taking damage and uh, in extreme speed range once Rayquaza hits the field once again. This is an interesting team we've got for our next opponent. We've got Mewtwo and Duskmane and Necrozma as the restricted pair. Seeing a um, uh, not so familiar face from past formats in Cresselia. Still a very good Pokemon I feel. Um, offers Trick Room support, uh, Helping Hand, Skill Swap, lots of different things there. Uh, Tapu Lele are going to have that fast psychic call, probably Mega Mewtwo Y and Ultra Necrozma I would imagine are the two Pokemon here. Whimsicott with the speed control support as well helps shut things down with its prankster ability. Um, but in all honesty, I think we could probably get away with going... Um, here we go Xerneas and... Uh, hmm. I don't really want to go Incineroar. Like, Incineroar is great in this match. You've got to bring it. I don't know whether I want to go Serena. Because um, Gastron can be good if the Trick Room does go up. But I don't think my opponent goes for the Trick Room, to be honest. Like, Rayquaza is going to be extremely good. Maybe Coco to change the terrain be a nice option there. So, um, the only reason Serena would have been really good in this match would have been if uh, we see this Whimsicott and we are actually indeed seeing it. So I'm going to go uh, for a Fake Out and Dazzling Gleam. We'll go Fake Out into the Coco just to try and get some damage there. I don't know if we'll be able to. We might just see it protect Whimsicott, go for a, a Tailwind here. But I think that the one thing that we want to try and do, um, if we do see a Tailwind go up with the Wimmy, is... Um, ah, that's a problem with Wimmy, though. Um, I might just go Dazzling Gleam and uh, Flare Blitz into the Wimmy, just to get rid of it. I always worry about... Um, always worry about Endeavor on Whimsicott, and it's always something I never really like to deal with. I uh, just want to get rid of it. It's always going to go for Speed Control at turn 1. And this may come back to bite us, but at the same time, um, 
you know, we've got to just try and, and get around things the best we can. I will try and snarl here, but I don't think we're going to be able to. It's either snarling, U-turning, or... I mean, we could attack with Xerneas as well, but we want to try. I mean, one of the things we could do is protect, switching Coco. Coco goes down here. Then we get Incineroar back in. We've got the fake out Geomancy that we can we can utilize. So Coco does go down, which it would be good if it could. It doesn't, unfortunately. Um, we're going to see a taunt. Um, I'm trying to manufacture that board position. Has worked out a little bit too awkward for us. Um, hmm. I don't know if a Dazzle and a Thunderbolt will get the Xerneas, though. That's the thing. And a Dazzle probably gets the Coco. Um, and we could just protect our own Coco, just to preserve things. Let me see the Dazzle. There we go. Oh, we might get taken down. Oh, it's a wild charge. But that Intimidate coming in is so handy for us there. So, taking down the Coco, chipping the Lele, setting us up for that requires us to come in at the end game here. The only thing we have to worry about a little bit is the. Um, the Ultra Necrozma. Now, if we can, get, oh, it's the, uh, it's not, it's, it's Mewtwo. Uh, okay. Um, so, do we want Coco now? I might protect Xerneas. And, um, but I mean, the thing is, it's scarfed Lele. We can't really do anything. So, fake out's not helping us massively here. Yeah. We could just double protect. Well, we can't double. We can't protect the Coco. Um, and Incineroar would probably be better suited. We're just going to take a Dazzling Gleam, though. That's the problem, I think. That's what I don't really like. We'll go for the Z move, try. I don't really want to go for the double protect because I don't feel like we'll get it. Uh, we'll go down to a Dazzle. Yeah. And then we'll see what this Mewtwo Shadow Ball thing. Um, okay. Well. Mega Rare can come in, and I think, I, th I feel confident that an extreme speed from this range will get the Lele, and we can try and, and Geomancy. Um, well, we'll Mega Evolve and extreme speed the Lele. I mean, yeah, I think we've got to, because otherwise we just take a Dazzling Gleam and the Mewtwo can double into the Ray. Um, and if we can, if that's the play they go for, maybe we can get a Geomancy off if we get the Lele, which we do with a crit. So whether that mattered or not, I don't know, but um, we do pick up the win though. So uh, the crit might have mattered, I don't know. I'd have to go back and check the damage calculator, but we'll jump into our next one. We've probably got time for a couple more, I reckon, today, so. And um, the big thing about this week is though, because I've not really done any showdown uh, content primarily on the channel ever before so it's gonna be something that I'd like some feedback on from you from all of you watching from home so uh, and whether or not in future if we do it do you want the face cam on do you want um, or do, you, do you just like the full screen just me chatting away in the background tally up to yourselves but it's all information that would be really appreciated uh, if you could um, let me know um, okay so I think Ray uh, Incineral, Serena, and um, do we want Xerneas? Do we want Xerneas? Xerneas isn't bad. I like Xerneas here, actually. Yeah, let's go for Xerneas. Um, okay, let's go for a Dragon Ascent into Mercro and bring in Serena. Let's stop this fake out shenanigans. Let's stop all these quash shenanigans as well. Um, then the next turn we've got potentially Faint if the Mercro is sashed. You would expect it to be, maybe. Uh, EV or light, potentially as well. Uh, we could maybe go for a helping hand. Dragon Ascent into the Incineral. We take down the Mercro. We're not taking it down though, so that's probably better for us. Um, we do you see the Tailwind come up? Um, maybe it's a good time to pull a double switch here. Uh, because I don't want to take a foul play on Rayquaza and um, the Mercro probably want outspeed speed ray, but you never know with how it's being trained. We're going to see a knockoff, and that is not ideal at all. Foul play as well into that slot. Um, but we can go for a Geo. Um, it's whether or not, yeah, we'll go for the Geo. We'll go for a two-turn Geo here. Oh, fair, but, uh. <laughs> doesn't matter whatever happens there. Um, what's my opponent going to bring in? Okay. Well, we'll bring in Ray. Groudon. Perfect opportunity to go for a earthquake, I think. 
Earthquake would be really good here. I worry about whether or not we're going to see um, Dragon Claw on this Dragon, uh, this Groudon. But I'll go Earthquake. I'll bring in Serena. It soaks up those Earthquakes pretty nicely here. Rock Slide! Okay. Uh, and Knock Off. Getting rid of our band. That's disastrous for us. We do get rid of the Incineroar. The Tailwind's going to end. Ray's going to be the fastest thing on the field, apart from this is. Oh, uh, this scissor. Mm. Now, the scissor goes bullet punch. Um, and we could go extreme speed, helping hand. But I just don't see it being enough to take down the Groudon. Um, this is tough, this is tricky, because I think unless we can switch in, bullet punch doesn't get us and we get a Dragon Ascent onto the Groudon. That would be the biggest, I think the best situation here. Oh, it's Mega Scissor. I think we're knackered now. It's not even bullet punching, it's going bug bite. Doesn't steal anything, but I mean, this works out fine. This works out better because now we just fake out the scissor, we go drag this and into the ground on. Um, oh, we could have went earthquake as well, but uh, hopefully this is enough. <sighs> it is enough, and now the scissors uh, ours, so uh, this works out all right. The bullet punch there could have been a bit wary for us so maybe we get away with it a little bit more than we maybe should have done but at the same time it doesn't look like it's got the bullet punch uh or oh, it has and it's worried about this arena switching in the whole time so that could be the thing so um good game uh mega p trainer left so we'll uh hop back on and this will be our last one of the day so let's hopefully we can get a win nice spicy team to uh, end up the episode today time is straight on gonna have that rayoga combination here mega metagross is gonna be the mega i would imagine tornadus as well uh undeniable speed control with tailwind there with that prankster ability Smeagol and Incineroar uh, <clears throat> on the other sides of the field. So, I think um, maybe we can do something like this. Incineroar, Xerneas, Serena, and I reckon um, Rayquaza. Yeah, okay, I'm liking this. So what we'll do to him one is go Serena. We'll go Geomancy. Um, they'll probably go Fake Out, and they'll probably go Tailwind. That would be my best guess. And then the next turn, what we'll do is switch Serena straight back out. We'll protect Xerneas and we'll have that Incineral fake out once again. Uh, ooh, a taunt even better because now we just go faint into the Tornadus and Dazzling Gleam. And we're laughing, laughing. Because there's a Tailwind, undeniably, we can't prevent that. But we can get rid of the Tornadus here. Uh, Incineral going for that Flare Blitz. Serena showing its bulk, especially after the Intimidate. Um, if you want the spread, as always, it is down in the description. Uh, the Serena spread. Metacross going to hit the field now. I think what we'll do is go for a U-turn into the... Ooh, do we go for a U-turn? Yeah, because I don't mind losing Serena right now. I want to be able to get an Intimidate onto this Metagross before it can uh, do much damage. Um, yeah, we do lose it. Now Incineroar going to take a bit more chip damage. Activate that berry. Which is fine. Now we get the Incineroar in. And we've got the opportunity to go for a fake out into the Metagross. Um, whether we do that, I think probably better going for fake out into the Incineroar here and just go and dazzle. I think the Metagross is going to protect 100%. Doesn't want to take unnecessary damage. It's my opponent like way of dealing with the Xerneas, so you need to preserve it, even though the Tailwind's up. And this is the pressure they were putting on with Incineroar here uh, with this fake out turn. So hopefully we can get this read right. Get the fake out into the Incineroar and maybe remove it and take my opponent down to the last two Pokemon. It's likely going to be Kyogre though, but I think with Rayquaza in the back end, yeah, there we go, Rayquaza comes in, uh, Metagross not wanting to stick around and this is going to punish my opponent even more. So the Metagross is going to come back in and I think now it's just it's too late for my opponent to really do anything. So we just Flare Blitz and Dazzling Gleam and that is going to be game and we pick up another victory here today which is very good for us isn't it so iron head coming out and uh, this last turn the tailwind Ooh, that's not good throw chop not so good either um you should have attacked maybe uh the xerneas there i'm forgetting myself that uh, we're in that last turn of tailwind but never mind uh because whatever happens here um it's it's all all right we have ray in the back anyway so just a little bit of a misguided attempt from ourselves but that will wrap things up for us so um good game to tombs even though he's left 
and we have a habit of doing that but uh, it's been a lot of fun my friends like I say I hope you've enjoyed this week with some uh, some just different content on the channel and uh, if you do enjoy this sort of content you would like it added because it's it's easy for me to do it's nice I enjoy it I enjoy chatting and things like that so um, and just playing around with teams I'm quite happy to come back um, every week with a different team and we can just explore it look at different ideas and how to change it and see how it actually does on the ladder so um, let's have a look what we've done this week um, 23 wins 9 losses it's pretty bad you really want your JXC well it's early days as well we're at 1346 uh, ELO so we've not played that many matches like 30 games it's not a great record though um, but and some of those have been disconnects from internet issues as well so I will just say that I'm just going to drop that in there but yeah I mean you really want your JXC you're looking at like a 70% minimum and you want your team to be consistently hitting that going into tournaments you really want to be pushing more towards 80% to kind of like run in line with that x2 record that's where you're kind of aiming at 80 percent you uh, like 10 games you're winning eight losing two so um around that number that's where you want to be aiming it's not easy to do of course but if you're hitting that you got to feel confident going into a tournament and I think around the 70% mark you're doing all right and as long as you've got your matchups down you're looking all right going into things so we're going to wrap it up there but thank you so much for tuning in have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all for the next one so until then take care and bye bye